Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the F1 Leagues Charity Tournament. We've done two races. All four leagues have done at least one race, and now it's time for the second round of races around Jeddah and at Sao Paulo in Brazil. My name is Jessica Ball, taking you through the next two races, and joining me in the commentary box is my uh, good friend, Miss Evil Dragon. How you doing? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm slightly voice broken still from doing commentary this week, but... Here we are, doing another two in a day. This time it's only 25%, so I'm doing a 50% of 100% races. How are you, Jess? I'm doing great. We had two great races to watch. We had, obviously, I'm trying to remember which one it was. It was to Silverstone and Spa, and obviously TML coming up on top in that one. And it was quite close in the Spa race as well, with LOE being very, very consistent. But in the next race we've got... We've got FRL versus One Hub Racing. Now, two of them really need to get off the mark here today because the standings are looking quite interesting indeed with TTML leading the way on 126 points and closely followed by League of Europe, 124 points. And then we've got third place, One Hub Racing on 93 and FRL on 92. So I think, Evil, we're going to have a close matchup between those two leagues tonight. Yeah, it's always going to be very close. It looks like... Uh... League of Europe will be at 125, I believe someone's done something wrong. Uh, 127 now for uh, the Masters, 125 for League okay. of Europe, uh, and 93 and 92 for One Hub and FRL. So it's going to be interesting to see what these boys can do. I've got, I've got some very familiar names in here, and I feel very at home. We've got Kingen, I can see Jensen, we've got Ryan. It's pretty much everyone I know is here. Mm -hmm. I think... The only person, uh, there's this person called Cam. I don't know who that is. Um, good friend of mine as well. So we've got some great people here for this great event as well. But I think we got, there's a loading screen coming up. And I'll be, everyone likes a loading screen, don't we, Jess? Yeah, we do. And we are about to get started. A little bit of information about this track. First use in Formula 1 last year, believe it or not, in 20. 21 and this circuit is designed for speed and i mean high speed corners it's a longest street circuit on the formula one calendar at 6.175 kilometers the second longest circuit on the formula one calendar after spa as well so it should be interesting as well a lot of corners you could go full fossil which we'll talk a little bit about in a minute and a quick reminder of the rules just in case those of you that are new to joining the stream so one shot qualifying you get a po you get a point if you get pole position and then going into the race, you get points for every position that you score up until last place. So if you DNF, you won't be scoring any points. And we are about to go on board with someone on their quality lap. And I, I'm just going to go with whoever goes um, at random because it, it's easy. Otherwise, we have to uh, jump through many people. We don't want that, do we? So we are about to get underway. Let us know who you're rooting for in the chat. And don't forget to click on the donation link in the description. We're raising money for uh, Great Ormond Street Hospital today so we have got uh one hub uh we're going on board with at the moment so let's take you on board with him as he heads towards turn number one and a uh, few people could go a bit wide there just to click the curbs a little bit as well and you reaching into seventh gear here take this to high speed towards turn two three and four a few people can invalidate there a few times as well heading towards uh seven uh eight and nine as well through the first sector as well we'll see what is a uh, fast lap time at the moment don't forget he won the first race here at silverstone he's four for the moment and he's not going for the alternate strategy this time he's sticking to the soft compound the tires so it will be interesting to see what he can do down now this is the highest speed part of the circuit as well as we go right and then left once again going into seven gear once more as well and i think we'll probably see a few overtakes as well there's three dr zones around this circuit so plenty of chances to go through the overtake. Now we're going to be heading towards um, one of my favourite parts of the circuit, actually turns 20 to 23. Oh, I was very close to an invalidation, but luckily he did not invalidate his run, which is very, very great to see as we head towards the final set, uh, final few parts. So turn 26 and 27 then as well. We'll see some DRS um, tactics, I would say, in the race. So Henry comes across the line. It is a... Uh, um, one hub on top of the moment with Tom Robbo, but Henry in second place. So we've got one hub, one hub, P1 and P2. And we've got FOL, P3, one hub, P4. So three one hub drivers in at the top four there. And we've got FOL, a lot of FOL drivers for third, fifth and sixth. So pretty even spread between the FOL and the one hub drivers at the moment. 
Yeah, I was riding aboard at Tom Robert for in that laptop. Beautiful, by the way. He got... He, well, we'll say he was in the wall nearly at t two points on the circuit. But, I mean, to be fair, on this circuit, you are always in the wall. So, Tom Robbo on pole position from Mr. Henry, who shot up through the last corner. He had the beautiful run to the line, it looked like. Uh, Stephen in third from Gackers. I think I still... I still don't uh, Chalkers. Chalkers. Chalkers in fourth. I still, one day I'll pronounce his name correctly. <laughs> Gentian in fifth. I had a Rocco in sixth. Josh in seventh. I had a Mr. Owen Wyatt in eighth position. Apex, I had a Cammy Boy in ninth. We've got Fisco in tenth. Charlie Ryan, infamous King and... Then we've got Osteban, and then we've got Casper, my friendly ghost, in 17th. Ivor, 18th. A Hawk in 19th. And we've got... I'm, I'm in 20th. Evil. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Someone that's called you. Uh, make sure you don't get too biased by a person that's called you, I have to say. Uh, some of you may have noticed there is a new new driver in in the standings there. Uh, Robin, unfortunately, can't make the final two races. So we already got one of One Hub's reserves in their rating in the rings. They're going to be rating, uh, obviously, this one in Jeddah and in Bahrain LA. And that is infamous as well. And uh, I believe, Liam, he's currently leading uh, the One Hub Prospect Championship as well. And he, he said to me in the chat that he likes Jeddah. So he's kind of looking forward to this one. But... I'm keeping an eye on Tom Robbo here t today because in Silverstone, he had quite a few spins and he was very unlucky not to get the win. Luckily, uh, his uh, teammate Henry helped him out there as well. But this uh, this chat, I'm sure, is going to be redemption for Mr. Tom Robbo and for a few drivers as well. Jensen is another driver who we need to keep an eye on as well, who didn't do too well um, in Spa, but he's got another chance to redeem himself here. There's quite a few FRL drivers they're also looking to do well as well. I think both of these teams are looking for a gem because there's only about two or one point in between those two leagues already. It's basically pretty much a, a battle for not being last at the moment. But who knows, they can set their way into the top positions at the moment. And look, look at all these lovely cars on the grid. So we'll look at the tyres then. Has all the top ten going on to the soft compound of tyres. And we've got quite a mixed bag um, in terms of strategy outside the top ten. We've got uh, Frisco... Charlie, Ryan, Infamous on the mediums, as well as Casper and Evo. And uh, we got King and Stephen. Uh, um, uh, no, uh, uh, like King and Stephen, yes. Hawk and Evo in the, on the soft compound of tyres. No one on the hards, luckily, because hards on a 25% race, it is not good as well. And one thing to point out as well, Jeddah is known for safety cars in real life. Good news for all the drivers. We're not going to get any safety cars. So if you have any spins or any damage, then uh, you're pretty much screwed. And we do know that this race is kind of like a damage uh, limitation race at the moment. And uh, we will keep an eye on the donations as well. And we got uh, someone, um, Mr. Luke Etheridge, the one who just commentated uh, a moment ago, who's just donated £10. So thank you very much, Luke, for your donation. Make sure you keep the donations coming in, by the way. The link will be in the description as well. Good to see Stephen up there in third position as well. Uh, um, him ahead of Jensen at the moment. Rocco as well, um, performing quite well too. So who would you expect to do well around this Jeddah circuit? Um, everyone. Everyone can do well. That, that is my question to that. <coughs> As I uh, hiccup myself there. I'm curious to see what Tom Robbo can do. Like I said, may have had a bad race at Silverstone. We've got Henry, we've got Steve, we've got uh, Kakas. Uh, I'm which I pronounced wrong again, but that's did. his name. It's his name now, okay? So we're going we're gonna to flow with that. I'm going to rename him that after this. Um, so, I mean, this could be interesting. It's a, it's a short run down towards turn number one. Anything can happen. I'm looking forward to it. But I normally do uh, the lights out. But today, I'm being nice. Yeah, yeah, and because we agreed before, Jess is going to do it. Yes, well, you're going to be doing the start in Brazil, so we both get to do a start of a race, just like we saw uh, Luca Papaya do earlier on, to make it fair, um, because we like uh, commentating on this league event. So we're waiting for all the drivers to head onto the grid. I'm excited. Jed is one of my favourite tracks to commentate, so I'm very happy that the guys at um, um, uh, League Racing TV is allowing me to commentate on Jed out of all the races. I'm absolutely delighted. But anyway, we're about to get underway then. We've got an all one half of a front row. Will it say like this? At the end of the race, we'll have to wait and see. The five red lights are on. And it's lights out, and away we go. And let's see who has got the decent start. It looks pretty even from the two one hot boys, but we can see Stephen trying to go all around the outside into turn number one already then to 
try and get past the one-up boys. We got Chalkers as well, who's had a good start. Jensen trying to cut back as well. We got Casper has dropped down a little bit into turn three as well. No major troubles at the moment. They're all staying within this train. Infamous has dropped a little bit though. Um, so he probably at the moment he's been passed by quite a few of the uh, FRL boys, but you get points everywhere. So we've got uh, a spinner already that I believe it's Hall from FRL. Not a good start for them. He's down in 20th position on those soft compound tyres. That is a bit of a shame there, but we got Tom Robbo in P1, Henry in P2, Steven in P3, and Chalkers in P4 at the moment. So the top four pretty, pretty much remain as they are. Yeah, no one really having major issues so far. We saw Infamous and Hawk tripping over each other ever so slightly, but everyone still looks like they've got the front wing in uh, at least one of bit position. I think saying that Infamous might have some damage actually immediately so uh it looks like some trouble for him as henry slots themselves there as he comes through the one of many corners on this circuit there's too many for me to keep count on is it, is it 27 corners on this circuit jess i think it's something 27 like yeah 27 corners which is uh i think about 13 too many in my eyes because i mean spa has many corners this has got even more corners but here is henry is he going to be challenging mr tom brother in turn one well he's not gonna be taking a dive from this far back team play very much in case right now at the top two because third position is Mr. Steve and then we got um Kakas uh, that I've said it Chalkers. Chalkers never mind <laughs> I, I give up Chalkers then in fourth position and we'll see if Henry decides to back him up there's always a possibility to try and get a one two three but anything can happen and it usually does around here it's a very tricky corner least when we come over right now easy to get a snap we saw Mick Schumacher have a monumental grasp uh, in qualifying in real life. We saw Alonso nearly go off there as well. We've seen many a car go off. Luckily, I think everyone's got through that corner, which has caught me out many times around here as well. You now come through in towards the mid sector and then flick it right and then left. Get as close as you like to the wall then as you re ride on board with fourth position. Uh, right there, but ahead of them, Stephen just ahead as we wait for DRS to come through. Top six position starting to pull away from Josh. Mr. Owen Ryan, my uh, good old friend there. Uh, a fellow commentator down in a position as we can see Ivo and Hawkers. I think Ivo's gone off into the wall potentially. He's dropped himself down into last position. Infamous, like I theorize, has got damage, so he's pitted for a set of hard tyres. We'll go to the end of this race, but that's going to put a dent in his strategy because he can't get back through his Hawk on the move. Then, as he comes up the inside of uh, Stephen, as well, one of two Stevens in this lobby, as uh, everyone sits fastest lap and talking to people. There is Henry. Uh, is Henry in the pit late? Yes, he is then. So, doing the undercut strategy on for a set of those lovely yellow wall medium tires. Remember, you still have to use two set of tire compounds. And that is the soft and medium. The gear will hold him and then teleports him out because it does like that on my screen a lot. And he will rejoin it down in 19th position. So, so far, Jess, so good for the top guys. But it is now uh, Mr. Wattenhub leading Mr. FRL. Then comes uh, Hackers in third. And then Jensen ahead of Rocco in fourth and fifth. Well, I have to say, Stephen is looking very, very good on the back of Tom Robbo. He can actually go for the lead here before the pit stops as well. And heading towards 20, turn 27 later on as well. That is before the pit lane. And we've seen people trying to do tactics in other leads. LOE being one of them as well. And it looks like Stephen has getting a little bit of the toe then coming on to this back straight. So we'll see what he could do then. Is he going to go left or is he going to go right? Tom Robbo just clips it quite nicely as well but I'm sure to see if we can close it in on the final part of that and we got our first time penalty of the session that belongs to Owen Wyatt but Stephen tries to go for the lead of this race to the right hand side he goes and we also got Chalkers going for the move then as well heading towards turn 27 but it's Stephen from FRL that takes the race lead but is any one of those drivers going to go into the pits? We see a purple car into the pits. That is Tom Mobbo. That is in. But that means Chalk is going to try and vie for the lead. Heading into turn one. He's got the DRS. A little bit of contact. Maybe a little bit of air towards turn one and two. But Stephen just edged it there. And I like the way, the way that Stephen's playing at the moment. He's just being patient. Let the other guys fight. Saving his bit of DRS as well. And that's allowing him to take the lead. Good for FRL. Yeah, I'm just looking through the liveries, by the way. I, I'm just going to say, Josh, I love you. Your livery is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Purple, black and gold. 
Uh, I, I rate that a lot. Meanwhile, you can see Diarra's down here. Well, actually, no, it is a Diarra zone. I keep thinking, it's not a Diarra zone in real life anymore, but it is here in the game still. Uh, but very pointless Diarra zone. It's, it's shorter than Monaco, I'm pretty certain. Well, you can't really ever take a Monaco down that at the best of time. Luckily, uh, we aren't at Monaco. We're at, well, Monaco, if Monaco was a uh, street circuit, well, it, which it is, uh, and it's very quick, which, which it is. So uh, there we go. I mean, we technically could say this is the swimming pool section coming up here, though if the swimming pool section was at a billion miles an hour, as we're presumably going to see Steven in as you flick it left and then flick it right just over the curb there. And careful not to get on this one too much, it very much on sales of cars. But here comes Mr. Uh, G. Cackers. And let's see, we're left or right, he's going to go to the inside line. That's going to be a pretty easy move then. Down at the inside, following suit then as well. Jensen just has to hold himself back ever so slightly on the exit. We will presumably see them dive in the pit lane. Yellow flag. Kingan's out. That is Kingan out of the race of what rotten luck for Mr. Kingan. As in comes Kakas then into the pit lane, which I've said about 18 times wrong. Uh, but that's his name <laughs> I'm going to say forever. Is uh, passing. Is uh, Cam getting overtaken by Mr. Apex right there? Let's see Cam, by the way. Up in sixth position. Now behind the other gold livery. Everyone likes gold liveries right now. These two are going to go battling, are they? They're going to sit back and uh, ruin my potential going side by side for it. Yes, they are. Uh, just well, team this. orders. Team yes. orders. Because obviously you don't want to fight your own team. Because if you make contact with each other and hit each other into a wall, then uh, there'll probably be some uh, um, not nice words going into them. We have another donation um, as well, um, Liam, to add as well. And it's an, an interesting name. £20 donation from someone called The Frog. Now, I would like to know who this The Frog is, so if someone could tell me who it is, let me know. But thank you very much to whoever that was for uh, donating. Much appreciated. We will keep your uh, donations coming in the chat, and obviously we will re read them as they come along through to us, Casper, getting a time penalty as well. I'm surprised the top six haven't come in yet, but we've got quite a few of the medium ones. We've got Ryan, Casper and Ivo on the soft tyres already as well, and to be fair the softs can last quite a bit um, in the race in the 50% as we've got Tom Robbo trying to dive around the left hand side there on Evil, and always Evil goes a little bit on track there, just a tiny bit as well. He's got Henry for company as well. Are they both going to go side by side there as well and work out the team? using all the traction and speed effectively as well as we've got Jensen that's past, uh, uh, well, past Steven and uh, Jensen is quite fast so um, yeah, that's team more there. Uh, Jensen you're the quicker driver so yeah you would go past at the moment more drivers going to the pits we've got Josh in and Hawk stays out as well for FRL but we've got uh, quite a few FRL drivers in we've got Charlie who's quite a quick driver actually Fisco uh, Evil is in as well so we've got Quite a few of the medium man is going in for soft tyres. Now, I am actually need to actually have a look at how what the drop-off of the soft tyres is compared to the medium. It's about a full second. And we do know the alternate strategy around it is kind of OP. So, uh, I am expecting the medium runners to catch... No, the soft runners to catch up to the medium runners quite quickly. And that's probably why the top six are staying out because they want to be on the soft tyres for as long as they can. We saw it um, in the first race in Silverstone. Um, I think it was Jamie for TTML, um, stay out on the sauce for as long as he can, and he was able to get in a very good position at the moment as well. We can see Hawk trying to fight Apex as well. Keep an eye on the two FRL guys up in front as well, and just like we saw Henry and Tom do in the first race, they're doing exactly the same in the next race, and uh, they're trying to use their DRS to uh, full effect as Steven gets past Jensen. Well, any of those two go in and to the pits. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully they don't share a box. Fingers crossed and not speed into the pit lane. They are fine there as well. Rocco stayed out as well. And what about Cam and Apex? Are they going to be going into the pits? Cam does. Apex stays out. And that will effectively promote quite a few drivers as well. Oh, Cam! Cam gets a five second penalty. He was speeding in the pit lane. But I think we're going to have another switcheroo from the one hub boys. Tom Robbo gets past Henry up in and to now third position of this race. And we've got all oh, this is very tight. Heading towards the pit lane exit there. Jensen getting ahead of Henry there. And he almost got ahead of Tom Wobbo there going through uh, turn three and four. A little bit of a slide there. Careful, Jensen. Well, I have to say, Jensen's pit stop, Liam. Really, really good. And he timed that brilliantly. So, at the moment, it's not one hub, one two. Jensen had the best pit stop out of all of them. And he did a net P2. Yeah, a good stop for him right there. I mean, we see quite a few actions going through. So, 
I think he's actually an FP3, Jess. Oh, yes. The, uh, yeah. yes. Oh, he's lost the rear. He might not be an FP3 anymore. Like, I wonder what See, it happened here as well. Whenever I speak, something happens. See, I'm just cursed. I swear. Now, I think... Is that Kermit who's uh, put it in there? I know someone called Kermit. He, he's, he pretends he's... He, he, well, he's a frog. Uh, is it Kermit the Frog? He might have been. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it is, isn't it? I, I, can't be I can't believe it didn't cross my mind. Sorry, sorry. Uh... Yeah, Kermit doing that is, uh, you can see Jensen then down in third position. We're expecting to see the top two in at any moment. And then immediately in comes Roko and Apex would be a smart man because Roko speeding in the pit lane, not going to help him. Now, what Apex needs to do is be nice and gentle in the pit lane and not speed. Now, Knowing my luck, he will not speed. He doesn't. 20 miles an hour, that's more like it. And here you can see the battle is Steven just ahead. He's just still uh, holding the DRS to Tom Robbo behind them. Jensen can't quite go at them. We've got Henry exit that pit lane. It's going to be quite curious to see where the drivers are. Roko going to come out just around about Josh's position. So in fifth position right there. Further down the field, you can see battling here between... Uh, Stephen and Casper. Oh! Oh, oh, oh someone's no, in the water. Come. come! Oh no! Cam! What have you and done? Apex! Apex is out as well! This is good news for FRL because all their cars are still in the race. That could be huge for the, the points in this championship because don't forget you do get points for finishing. That might be good news for Stephen as well. Obviously, all of the drivers must be in a party together so they must help everybody as well. No safety cars as well. And Steven looks like he's going to get the left-hand side in into this next game. We've got Fisco as well. Oh, my God. That was almost a dive bomb there from uh, Fisco. But he almost got uh, one of the one-hole cards, but he did not. But I think both of the FRL boys are working together as well. We'll see how Jensen does on the back of Tom Wobber. But so far, looking at how consistent FRL are looking, this is looking good for them. It looks like they will be ahead of one hub in the standings. They were last in the standings earlier on, but now it looks like they will probably jump on hub understanding for the way this is going which is good news as well and uh, it's great to see as well that they're not giving up as well but Casper is not going to let FRL score any more points be careful that you don't uh, uh, put people into a wall there which is just not he gets past one FRL car will he get past another one you can see Fisco is harvesting a little bit has the head on the straight but we'll keep an eye oh we got Tom Wobber and Jensen so I've decided to turn number one and two so many battling happening all over the place and this is absolutely crazy but Tom Wobber almost lost out to Jensen for uh, P2 there. It would have been an FRL 1-2 there, but Tom Wombo is just keeping it steady at this moment in time. And we, we I think we're starting to see the soft runners already closing in. Charlie being the leading soft runner, don't forget, and he hasn't got a time penalty. So he could be on for a nice podium as well, but he, this is not an individual championship, don't forget. This is a team's championship, and you get points for being a team. So don't be surprised to see people not fighting their own teammates as well. I believe everybody has made their mandatory pit stop, so for uh, most... Stop. Oh, oh, who's yet to stop? Uh, for over Ste oh, Steven is still yet to stop. Uh, there is a... Uh, Steven yeah. stopped. Uh, the other Steven. Oh, there's too many Steve. Oh, yeah, Steven has yet to stop. Okay. Uh, the one in 11th position there as well. I'm surprised he hasn't done so, but to be fair, he wants to be on the soft as long as he possibly can. Bisco gets past Casper and Casper's off a bit, so I'm there to Fisco. The walls could be just so close, so much margin forever. That if you just hit the walls, that's where you get so much damage. We'll have to wait and see as well as Rocco gets past Josh up into P5. Um, but we see Josh will have the DRS heading towards this start finish straight then. But is he going to be quite close enough heading towards turn number one? We'll have to wait and see. No, he's not quite oh, close enough. Three. Tom, the three wide as well, going into turn number one. There's just so much action happening everywhere. Tom Wobbo lost two positions as uh, Jensen's got past him. So Jensen, brilliant move from him at the moment, but could Tom fight that? I have to say, we, I, I, have we seen uh, a team one, two before um, in a race today? I don't think we have. Has, wow. Time penalty for our race leader. That means Jensen is on that race leader at the moment. Yeah, Tom Robert just hit the wall on the inside there as well. So easy to do around these corners. It comes at you. You can see all the sparks flying out on the exit of the wall as well. As I think that must have been uh, Stephen the First. He's slightly like he tapped his. He's just carrying on his merry way. And behind him, Jensen. Now, if I was a betting man right now, which I'm not, I'm going to presume Stephen might let Jensen go through and then potentially try and back up. Oh, that's what I saw earlier on with a few people doing. 
backing each other up, just trying to uh, slow them up. Is he talking of that? Uh, you can see Casper battling with the other Stephen as they uh, swivel and swabble away. And that is, of course, Stephen, who is yet to a stop. Really just trying to do the, the tactical game there as Casper's got damage. But up front, you can just see the top two just in line of stern as sideways line of stern, <laughs> might I say, as they almost spun immediately, as I said. Yeah, and it's Tom Robbo close enough to try and do a... Uh, to do something at turn one, it'd be a brave, uh, a brave, brave move. Uh, no, he does not. He does not go, but Josh tries to go for the move into turn number one, and with the DRS, he says thank you very much. There is P5 for him as well, so things look like it's on the up for Josh at the moment after having a poor race in Silverstone, but anything can happen. We've got three laps to go of this uh, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Time does fly by already. It's Casper's in the pits then. So, uh, yes, unfortunately, he has got damage, but we've got the two FRR boys, Steven and Ivo, fighting as well. You don't want to be fighting too much because you'll lose points if you make contact with anybody from your team, but it doesn't look like they're going to make contact, which is good, great to see as well. Liking the fact that they all got the same liveries, by the way, keeping it um, um, or good teamwork there as well, which is great to see. We can easily tell which is uh, FRL as well. Nicely colour-coordinated too as well and I can't wait to see how well they do in the next race because looking good for them so far as Hawk gets past Chalkers then up into P11 and Chalkers almost got past Hawk then as we head towards set to two he's going to flip left or right we'll have to wait and see as well as uh, DRS could be in full effect at this moment in time as uh, everyone's grazing the wall just a little bit as well keep an eye on the front as well between Jensen and Steven, we've got Rocco and Josh going for a move there as well, up to P5 once more. And I wonder if Rocco's knowing the tactics with Josh here, but I don't have a clue, to be honest with you. But meanwhile, Steven swaps places with Jensen once again. They've got to be careful they don't swap too much, but we've seen that they're probably you trying to use the slip stream as much as possible. Both drivers have DRS, so it allows people, well, the one of boys behind them, to uh, not not have the DRS and not use it for full effect, because Henry is effectively out of DRS now which is not great to see at this moment in time but a phenomenal lap to go more times on the penalty board we've got Stephen doing his final stop he's leaving it just like Alexander Alban did in Australia oh, oh he's hawked off he's had a bit of a spin he's got to be careful he doesn't rejoin unsafely which he does not luckily he's ghosted so that is a great news but this is an FRL 1-2 at the moment. Very, very, very pleased to see them too. Doing very well indeed. Don't forget Jensen has uh, scored well in the past. He was a TTML champion back in the day. Also um, did well in lot leagues such as WOR as well. So for those of you that don't know, obviously Jensen is a uh, sound league race. I had the pleasure of commentating on in the past as well. So Jensen then breathes past Steven. I don't think there was much challenge there into the penultimate corner as well. I don't think they need to fight too much because they know that their main rivals are behind them. As meanwhile, Rocco and Josh going once again into final corner, turn 27 then. And uh, Rocco had, had to put a little bit of a fight there heading into the final corner. But we'll see then, what can Josh do? Josh heading in towards turn number one. Tom Robbo gets past Henry then, tactically up into P3. Can he get the gap that he needs to? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that the soft runner's not able to catch up to the medium runners there, which is a bit of a shock, but I think it just goes to show the, the pace advantage that our top six really do have in this race compared to our soft runners. Meanwhile, we've got Owen trying to get past Hawk then in to turn 27. Chalk is doing the same into turn one, getting past Ivo there. Indeed, and uh, good to see you, by the way. My good old form, well, he used to come and date with me back in the day. Pepsi free, £10 uh, pounds, uh, in as well, or $10, I'm guessing, because he is from the old uh, the old other side of the old big pond. Uh, he's commentating later as well, um, after us, with James yes. Head. So. Uh, oh, I want to give him a hug, and I love, I love commentating with Pepsi Freak. Uh, the yin and yang we always talk about, as uh, you can see Casper still sparring away with Steven in towards turn number one, and they all get themselves stopped right there. But up front, we're already coming for the last sector, Jess, and that is Mr. VSR Jensen then, or Jensen, or I think it's pronounced Jensen, actually, as uh, Steven, just following suit, trying to get very close, just literally just sniffing his rear end. He'll get the DRS, the top two, though, 
coming across like that. It's going to be a one-two for them as well. They're going to make a photo finish. They do make a photo wow. finish. Wow. That but is it's even got five second penalty plus a three second, so it's not an FRL one two. Tom Robo mm. gets P two, Henry gets P three, Steven gets P four, Josh P five. Uh, no, Josh got dropped down then at the moment. So let's see what the order is. Wants to come across the line. Ryan has a penalty, so we'll see where he drops to um, later on. We got Fisco as well. Don't forget, you get a point if you finish. So everyone will get points, um, if, of course, if they finish. So Chalkers in 10th. I vote in 11th. We've got a nice battle, actually, for P12. Will Evil try to send it in the start of the trick? No, he does not. Um, why it says P12, Evil, P13. Hawk, P14. So definitely Evil started in the bat, and so it is a good result for him. Hawk, 14. Casper and Steven and Infamous will be the last drivers to finish scoring points for their teams. And... It looks like it will be advantage FRL for this matchup, but uh, it will, it'll be interesting to see how that affects the overall standings. So we've got LOE and TTML yet to race their second matchup, and they're the ones in the top two of the standings for this race. Infamous will be the last driver across the line there. Pretty decent race. There was so much battling happening everywhere as well, so very great to see. And we will go for your results in just a moment, but I had to say stellar performance from Jensen. He didn't have a good race in spot. I did say he needed to do well here in Jeddah and uh, he delivered. He must have read my mind and watched the stream or something and said you know what Jess, I want to prove you right and do well. And he did. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Well, what a fantastic little race. The champagne will be sprayed. The trophy is held high. But it is the beautiful, beautiful game here of F1. It's the good, beautiful game of uh, the, the world of chickens between the drivers who, who was uh, clucking Jensen, he was clucking, because he's won, he is the, uh, the, well, he's, he's won, I don't know what I'm talking about right now, but Tom Robber in second position, Henry in third, Stephen in fourth, Charlie in fifth, we've got Josh, or Jess, or Jox, I, would, I pronounce it about Josh. eight different ways, but uh, it depends on my mood, Rocco in seventh, Fisco in eighth, Ryan in ninth, Gakkers in tenth, Ivo in eleventh, my good old friend Owen in twelfth, we've got me in thirteenth position, <laughs> ahead of Hawk. Then comes uh, off Stephen in 15, Casper in 16, Infamous, uh, Apex, Cam, and Kingen rounding up the back. Those bottom three did not finish up to contact at turn number one. Yeah, so that's the end of that one as well. So in a few moments' time, we will be heading to the next race, which will be, uh, let me have a look, it's TTML versus LOE, and I'm very excited for this matchup, Liam, as well. Two closely contested leagues as well on top of their game, and obviously they won their first matchups earlier on. Who's going to make it a second score in the most points? We'll have to wait and see. But we do have um, a, a an update on the money total that we have got. Uh, so far donated to the Great Ormond Street Hospital, £202 donated to the charity for this event. Thank you so much. To everyone that has donated much appreciated and i think it will go to support um the, the well-being of children and young people so uh, very very great to see so uh thank, thank you so much to them and if you want to have your name mentioned in the stream don't forget you uh to click the link in the description and we will shout you out as well just like uh, all of us commentators have done in the past as well so uh, great great job on that one so we're about to get the next race underway, and we are going to be going to a track that me and uh, Liam commented a few days ago, actually, and it's one of our favourites. It is the uh, Brazilian Grand Prix, Sao Paulo. And uh, I, I, I have to say, uh, I think I'm going to have no voice by the end of this one, but we will have to wait and see, of course. A lot of drivers have done well in the past here in LOE and TTML as well, and... Uh, um, I know the on this track is going to be quite interesting as well. What do you think about this track? So many different characteristics to it. I'm going to get PTSD from from commentating. <laughs> I've commentated about 18 times in the recent weeks. It, I, I do. I love this place. It is one of my favourite places to commentate. Recent, well, mainly because it's the only place I ever commentate on. But, but we've got LOE, which I commentated twice here uh, as well. I mean, I just I commentated twice over one of them. Think as well, actually. Uh, not too long ago. So uh, there we go. Literally, this is my uh, this is my uh, home 
Mr. Brazil, first hosted a race back in the 1970s. I've got a nice little stat fact up in. For 1973, the first F1 race uh, at this circuit. This circuit opened in 1940. Five Brazilian drivers, by the way, have won this race. That is Emerson Fittipaldi, Nelson Piquet, Ayrton Senna, Flavio Massa, and Carlos Pache, of course, which this circuit is named off. Now, remember, that is not all completely at this circuit, because, of course, we did race at Rio a few times in the 1980s as well. That is why it, the, re, the winner stat is slightly skewed because Alan Prost has six. So the most successful driver around this circuit is Michael Schumacher. He's won it four times with Vettel and Hamilton on three. McLaren and Ferrari, by the way, share pretty much top honours around the Brazilian Grand Prix with 12 and 11 race wins respectively. This circuit, by the way, 4.5. 309 kilometers long, normally 36 laps, but obviously 18 laps ahead of the driver. Six to the left, seven to the right around this anti clockwise circuit. Pole sitters, by the way, 36% chance of winning. I, I, I don't, pre I'm presuming we're going to get the other, is it what, 74% chance of them not winning potentially here today? Uh, the championship, <laughs> by the way, in real life has been won him 2005, 2007, 2008, 9, and 12. So, quite a lot in recent memory, though, saying that. It's over a decade ago since the last championship won here. I just realised I feel old now, because that <laughs> 10 years and since that drive by Sebastian Vettel, back through the field after spinning around by contact with the... I, well, the... the uh, it's not his uncle, nephew of Ayrton Senna, Mr. Bruno Senna, who uh, some people don't like, some people do. I like Bruno Senna a lot. He's a lovely bloke. Uh, as well. I've actually um, spoken to him once a long time ago. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever r realised that. I don't think I've ever said that, but there we go. Oh, not now you did! In fact, there we go. No. I've spoken to Bruno Senna before. He's a <laughs> person. But we've got the lovely boys here, and we're all readying up already. We've got all of our drivers in here, and it is the lovely people at the great, great Great leagues of LOE, and we've got, is it, what's the TTML. Other TTML as well for 17 drivers of two leagues, which I have commentated on quite a lot recently as our TTML, which uh, I used to be commentating for a long, long while back, actually. GT uh, Sport. GT Sport used to do it uh, as well as uh, used to do some of the other leagues that they hosted for uh, other things as well for, of course, their series. Indeed, of course, Halloween could start commentating on it this season as well, John, at mid-season, and they love me because I just commentate and I sound like Murray Walker, uh, <laughs> which usually happens around here. But here in Brazil, I've got all the corner names, which I cannot pronounce the love of my life because they are Brazilian, so I think it's... I'm going to butcher this. If I get, I'm going to get shouted at, but... Uh, well, well, you, well, well if, if, if you butcher it, if you, if you butcher it, it's not my fault. It's so not well, my fault. <laughs> yeah, so uh, whilst we uh, wait for one shot qualifying to begin, we've got the updated standings as of uh, race three, so after FRL and 100 just finished. So FRL now, 236 points, 100 racing, 166. Uh, then we got TTML in third, 127. But obviously, they will jump up if they have a good result here today. And League of Year, 125 points. So those are your standings thus far, but it could all change heading into the final few races coming up soon, but we got Brazil to look at first, and uh, uh, Mr. Liam, uh, take us on board a lap with uh, the guy in fifth at the moment Simply Superman from TTML Indeed, you come down then in towards turn one in the centre, right into two looks ready to move through there, up into safe gear as you come down into the curve of assault turn three, nice and shallow to the inside a little bit on the curve, rear and one step up, but he is absolutely flying as you come into four and five, that's Lesser de Largo then has down on the brakes, down into fourth, up into fifth, into sixth, up towards seventh gear as you come up over towards the crest, into Faradala, turn number six. You see many drivers go on the curve and spin around, not so mean, not too long ago. As well as you now come into seven, into Laratunia, and then into eight, and down into nine, Parahalo then, uh, Parahinio, might I say. There is you now come up towards turn number ten, Bico de Pato. And it's got a very easy to snag a break and go wide. Down into fifth, now up to third. This is a very close position then as you come down into Maraduno. Turn 11, up the crest again, then spot the breaking zone into Young Cow then. And then right the curve, all the way up then into 13, 14 and 15. Turn at 14, uh, still to the boxes. Here's the corner then in into the last corner, which is turn 15, which is called Archipibias. As up to the right, and it is P2, then it's P3, never mind. As he's got there, Jordan's been disqualified from the session. I don't know what's happened to Jordan, but well, he's disqualified on a circuit, by the way, with Jordan 
won it in 2003, the last ever win. It would be quite fun if Jordan won this race, I will say. But it is uh, Slash on foe, pole there, yeah, pole, from Campbell in second. We've got Simply Superman in third, Verstappen in fourth, ahead of Killer Blue, ahead of Lynx, Larkin. Then we've got Legend in eighth position, Jamie in ninth, J. Cole in tenth, Gary in eleventh, Commentalist in twelfth position, Fledgy ahead of Dan, and we've got Old School ahead of uh, Nosek. We've got Ghost ahead of Tam and Jordan and Jonah at the back, respectively. We're both not setting lap times, but the top two separate by 18 one hundredths of a second, yes. Well, Campbell has done very well in the past, so we've got uh, TTML P1 and LOE P2. Then we've got TTML and LOE. Pretty much, we've got a kind of a split between TTML and LOE in this field at the moment. The whole field, the ones who set a lap, are separated by less than a second. So grab your popcorn, folks. Make sure you tune in because it's going to get very interesting indeed between these two leagues. I think mean, nothing separates between two of them because they all have very quick drivers on their rosters. So LOE are in the orange and pink liveries. And we've got TTML in the blue and white liveries as well to distinguish between the two. So there we go. So we have got the soft tyres. Well... They're probably going to be used quite a lot in this race from the medium ones, because the mediums, they're probably going to last three or four laps before they go onto the soft, because obviously they want to be on the softest tyre possible for the majority of this race. Another track, which is about a second quicker compared to the medium zone, so we expect the top ten to get a quick start very quickly, and I won't be surprised to see everybody going on the medium tyres uh, outside the top ten, but we'll have to wait and see as they all... Um, go on their formation laps as well. Now they've seen um, their rivals race earlier on as well, so they know what they're going to do. And I'm a bit surprised that it goes from TTML Liam has gone for the soft compound of tyres as I um, need to get that disabled. There we go, because that, that's annoying me for not having that off. But anyway, Ghost on the softs. Everyone else outside the top 10 have gone for the mediums. A tactical strategy perhaps from TTML? Yeah, goes there. He's going to go for Guns of Glory then. And that, we, why not do it? We are, of course, for charity as well. So, make you forget, we want to have some fun. Go do some fun because we everyone likes fun here as well. We like seeing drama. We like seeing excitement. It's all for charity as well. And I'm going to enjoy this because Brazil, a circuit which I've commented on too many times right now, <laughs> uh, I've done about, I think I've done over a thousand laps commentating on this track recently uh, in the last year or two. So, uh, I'm very accustomed to seeing many many things around here but let's see what all these 20 drivers can do slash at the front jenner at the back jordan in 19 campbell in uh second we've got the middle of the pack which will be 10th position by the way good i can count and that is j cool in there we've got jamie and gary either side of him and i will say uh, orange and pink, absolutely resplendent colours, by the way. Uh, colours which uh, don't normally, in my opinion, work, but I will say they've made it work very well. Blue and white, meanwhile, that's a sign that it works all the time. Uh, it reminds me of the old Tyrrell liveries, actually. Uh, it does. Actually, that as well. I can't remember, actually, an, uh, an orange and pink livery. Some of and Arrows, as well. Arrows, arrows 90, 97. Uh, Damon Hill actually won, uh, almost won, in Hungary. But I did the start in Jenna. Liam, take it away for the start in Brazil. Indeed, Jonah at the back then, up front then. It is Slas and in any second now. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Thank you again very much. One, two, three, four, five red lights. Look, but never stare because we are go here in Brazil. Looks like a very good start from Slas. As they come down towards the first corner, it's Slash leads them from Campbell there. Verstappen trying to make a move up into towards turn number one. As they all sort themselves down into the center rest. And it looks very close there. Bit of contact. That was uh, Superman battling with a step on the exit. But it's a very good start up front from Slash. As they head themselves down into the fourth corner, as everyone slobs themselves there. Carmental is down in position as Fledley making up a little bit of a stop. But everyone so far gets themselves turn three, four into five and six. And everyone nice and gently up here. We don't want to see any yellow flags right now. They've all survived. That's what we like to see. As they now come down into eight, into Parahunio 9. But it's Slash leading from Campbell. Superman in third. Verstappen. No heroics yet from the Dutchman. Ahead of Link Lennox in uh, fifth position. Killer ahead of Larkin. J. Cole. Then come Legend. Then comes Jamie. Fledley. Commentalist. Ahead of Gary, Dan and Old School. Tam in 16th, goes ahead of Yoda, Novik and Jordan at the back still so far. 
as we now come through the last quarter and already the first lap is done. Expect by the way these soft tyres go off around right about lap five to six historically and we'll be seeing a lot of things. Thank you very much to Lewis Anderson for uh, five pounds as well. As Larry Slash continues leading the off from Campbell, who's now just got four tenths of a second behind him. Superman just following behind him. Jordan, I think, has got damage. He's in the pit there yep. for a new nose, it definitely looks like. They all slot themselves down. So far, no one really making up too many surprising moves. Then they're all just being a little bit cautious right then and waiting for the deer. It's waiting for the first opportunity to pass. But who is doing well? Who is not doing well so far? Well, inside the top ten, we have got... One, two, three, four, five. Uh, orange and pink cars of uh, League of Europe. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five cars as well for TT Mouse. So if my maths is correct, which it usually isn't, that is five apiece right there uh, in D. But knowing me, I've probably miscounted something and it's all gone horribly wrong. It's Verstappen there getting on the curve as he comes up behind Superman. And I will say, let's see what the Dutch driver can do following suit. Are we going to see anyone diving in the pier lane? No, we're not. We're taking a nice shallow line up towards turn number one as they all now wait for DRS to open. Right about now as they all pretty much slide themselves a line of stone. Lap number three of 18. That is a little bit slidey for Campbell, Superman and Verstappen. Still following suit as you look down through the rest of the field. A bit of a gap then from P10 to 11. So the top 10 starting a little bit of a gap then. And then the rest of the field slowly following suit as well. So two groups already following. As you can see, Tab batting of old school. Bit of contact there as they're going to one real bang, bang, bang as they pick up. No, not the curb sunshine. Ah, ah, oh, God, God, God. Contact up the inside. That's brave. Come on, let's keep it together. Oh, you yes, Luke. Is he going back on the inside? He is! Oh, God! Oh, God! Contact, and that was brave, and bang, 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 and there is Ghost, who's well gone for him. Now he's trying to ghost for him. Unfortunately, Ghost, he can't quite do that, Sunshine, because he's not invisible for you. Uh, but he tried it. I think might have got a bit damaged, but old school there getting a little bit, well, old school with Tab. Might we say, and that's allowed a bit of a gap there right now. Up front, he's up the inside, I say. Comes Jonah on Ghost. Are we going to see a battle? for the top two then as we head themselves down towards turn one it won't be here but it very much and possibly will be down into Dasa Zalago then into turn number four as through turn one through turn two slash a bit twitch in the rear end it's going to have to cover this one but what can he do will he defend it too heavily it's not going to be taken counting for a baby hit up the inside he goes here comes Campbell to take that position and that looked very easy there slash not putting up too much of a fight because why would he right now it would be very um audacious to try and defend too much so he could do so but decided against it meanwhile haven't let jess spoken in the first four laps but jess you can speak now <laughs> yes to be honest it was action packed in the first four laps there so i was, I, I was happy to let uh, liam take the first four laps for you at this moment in time but ghost at the back for tgml's pit for the medium compound side everyone has stayed out at the moment will any of the guys from Aloe think about following suit and maybe triggering the undercut. We will have to wait and see what they could do then. It's close between Lynx and on Verstappen then as we head towards the start finish straight and DRS will be activated between both of these drives we've got LOE in the pits, Killer Blue is making his first pit stop on to the medium tyres at the end of lap 4, Campbell's in the fastest lap which you do get points for um, as well as well as getting points for pole position too so uh, if you get fast lap at the end of the race then that's good news as well Link, is he going to dive around the inside to see the Largo in turn 4? He does not, he thinks better of it at this moment in time but he's still eagerly close at the moment so don't be surprised to go side by side there. So Killer Blue on to set the medium tyres. Will he be ahead of the guys when they come in later on? We'll have to wait and see. He's got a bit of clean air as well, which should help him pump up those fastest laps as well because he's got to have the best outlap he can because otherwise he's going to fall way behind the rest of his rivals. And then we've got Fleddy as well, who's in P10, who is 1.2 seconds behind the train. But he's got Carmentas, Gary and Dan for company that are looking to go for any moves. So... Final corner. Remember, we saw Pierre Gasly go for a move for P2 of the race, getting past Lewis Hamilton. But are we going to see Slash go for a move here? Or won't any of the two drivers go in and two of the pits? Slash comes in then. He goes into the pits. Slenderman. Uh, Slenderman? Superman. Oh, they, they sound so similar, don't they? Superman um, stays out. Link stays out. I'm surprised more people didn't come in 
to be fair, we've got a slash in legend in J. Cole Old School. They're going in for a set of medium tires and soft tires, respectively. Um, I'm expecting Old School to go on the soft because you have to go on at least one different set of hard compound. You can't use the hards. And I don't recommend you choose the hard compound tire because it's an absolute nightmare to race on. I went on the hards accidentally in the Brazil race this week. And it was not cool. I did one lap on it, and I was like, you know what? I don't care if I lose time. I'll go in the pits. Luckily, the safety car saved my race. But there's no safety cars here in this event. If you get spun or get damaged, that's pretty much game over for you, unless other people have worse luck than you already. So, Fleddy, Carmentalist, they'll probably be thinking about coming into the pits very, very soon then on the end of lap number six because the softs can make it to the end from here. I believe, or maybe they'll be pushing it a few more laps as we've got a bloody the leading car on the set of the medium tyres. As we've got Campbell and Superman in the pits. And we've got five, four drivers staying out then. Bloody is starting to catch up to the soft runners, actually. So are we starting to see the crossover come between the means and the soft? Because... Jamie, well, he's uh, he's edging off Fleddy. Will Jamie let Fleddy through as part of his teammate? Because you can't really fight this, can you? Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do. Meanwhile, it's uh, Verstappen ahead of... We're typing, keep calling him Linux all day, which is linked. Uh, that is an old computer, by the way, the Linux, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I'm sure he's not that old. Uh, meanwhile, behind them, Larkin down in third position. And Much then, better race from him. Yeah. Larkin, then the uh, the big boss man, isn't he? A big Larkin, is that the big boss yeah, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's a captain. He's the the big man from other ways. So uh, he's uh, yes. So uh, he's uh, in charge of the F1 side in uh, League of Europe. So uh, he's uh, proving uh, why he basically he did have a good race in uh, Spa. I think I remember he retired, but he's doing a lot better today. Such word as for staff and his teammate comes into the pits. It's TTML versus Alloy at the moment for P1, and we got Fleddy in third, I will see if Fleddy starts to catch on, more drivers are coming into the pit, Slash, where is Slash, Slash on Campbell then, he's got a DRS then, so is it going to be bang, 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 into turn number one, we'll see then, to the left inside, no he doesn't go to the inside, he wants a DRS, going into turn three, very tactical, goes Slash, but is he going to be close enough, it may be too little, too late, loving his halo, by the way, looks very, very nice. I didn't know you could get that type of halo on the game, probably in podium pass or something. But anyway, to see the Largo, he doesn't go for the move either. So it shows that Cam Campbell has a quite good pace at the moment on those medium tyres. So Campbell, your net race leader, slash a net P2 Superman, a net P3. So we've got LOE, TTML, TTML, and we've got three LOE cars, line astern right now. But Verstappen is not that far behind Superman, actually. So Campbell may choose to back the TTM TTML driver so he can allow Verstappen to close in, which is what he's doing right now. Lynx is in the pit, and he's going to go on to a set of the medium tyres. So that just leaves Larkin, and who's staying out um, for LOE. And he'll be, the, I think, the last person out of the soft runners to come in the pit. Carmentalist, the leading runner on the medias, but here comes Slash. Past Campbell, but this time he does make it work. He's not going to have the DRS into turn four, though, but I guess he learned from his mistakes from last time and just got let through. So, Campbell, he's got to get past this time. Does he have the speed? Does he have the chatching? Slash is trying to make sure Campbell does not get any slit stream at all. Campbell to the left, he does not. Jonah gets a free second time penalty, but Lynx gets past Superman. So much battling happening, and I think, I think Superman let Lynx through there. Yes, he did. So there we go. Campbell is uh, down into second position. And now we've got TTML leading this race. And that race lead, to be back. The, the actual race lead at the moment is uh, LOE at the moment, but he's still yet to stop. Yeah, indeed. So Larkin leads them from Fledley. No, uh, Noslek in third position. I'm presuming Larkin will probably come in. No, he's actually in the pit then right now. So I was, was going to cut to him and say he's probably going to come in the pit. He's in the pit right now, so never mind. Uh, there we go. Uh, then we got Fledley, we got these guys all coming in, then Tam's coming in then for his stop for a set of soft tyres, Slash vs Campbell, round number 62 then, and then see DRS, and now are we going to see the same manoeuvre which you saw last time, is he going to sit back and relax, 
No, he's going for it. He's not. Oh, no, there we go. Never mind. He is going to relax. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Tactical games right now. But what uh, we saw Slash do last time is he backed too much up and it cost him. This is exactly what uh, Campbell's just done and it's going to cost him as well. Further down the field, we've got Larkin coming up the pit. No, he's going to be brave on the brakes there. Down the inside, he's going to be awfully close as he's going to be rubbing and racing there. He's going to be forcing his way through. They touch, they touch. Is he going to hold the inside of Superman? He's round, he's dropped it. And a very similar manoeuvre in time scene before. Trying to hold the inside, it wasn't going to work. He comes back on circuit. The ghosting system says thank you very much. And he gets himself back through, but Superman from hero literally to zero in a batter space of a few yards yet he was optimistic it nearly worked he just didn't look like he was holding his line and they ended up contacting it to one apiece line as well through that the outside versus the inside but of course larkin had the uh edge ahead as Fledley comes in for a set of soft tyres. Now, top two, remember, on for softs. Here is Campbell, then here is Lynx. Back to the but just about holding the DRS, but here, Lynx isn't going to care about that too much. He's going to try and go down the inside. They're going to box him in, and then see, there we go, this is the boxing strategy. And they boxed him in then, and he's going to be sent off to Amazon. On the exit of turn number one is Ed C, then coming back through. Are these two going to switch positions then? Yes, they are. Up the inside comes Lynx on Slash. And now it's the Hawks of uh, Campbell, Larkin, Verstappen, Jacob, Keller Blue and Carmentalist. What a little line of orange boys right behind them as well as they all slot themselves up then into five, in towards six and seven then. And now the question is, is who is going to be making the manoeuvres? Who is going to be aggressive? When do you do this manoeuvre? Because remember, every single point here counts. These two uh, teams leading this uh, they were separated by, I think, two or three points before. Now, I don't know what they're going to be separated by this, but it's going to be close. But remember, though, in the top ten, we've got three. We've got four TTMLs, and then the rest of them all literally in the line. Might you say it was all the legal Europe's, and then Celo, you can definitely see Lynx has got a bit of pace right now. He's putting that gap. He's got Slash now behind, and we've got Campbell just sitting behind. I won't be surprised to be a potential mover here for Larkin to try and come through. The captain... Captaining nearly the order right now, but Campbell just about steering the ship. Yes, in indeed. He's almost a leading LOE runner as well, but Campbell's still managing to lead the LOE cars away. Well, I'm sure Campbell would want second place at the moment, but he's just being a little patient boy right now because he knows the race is not won on this lap. It is won, won on lap 18 as well, so we'll have to wait and see what goes on then as well. So... Yes, as the evil was saying, everyone scores points. And so far, Touchwood, it'll be the first race we have no DNF as Fleddy gets past Jamie into a corner, which I didn't think you would get past, but you do, as Dad almost tried to get past Jamie in into this tricky chicane. And as I said, there will be no DNFs. Jonah <laughs> is out the race. Oh, God, I'm so sorry to the TTL boys. I curse them. I said I wouldn't curse anybody today, and I did. So uh, I feel quite bad for those guys now. But anyway, Dan gets almost gets past Jamie, but he, he let uh, past uh, Gary because Ga Gary want, he thinks that he's faster at the moment for Jamie. So we'll have to wait and see then. Ga uh, Jamie is harvesting then. Gary to the outside line then this time into turn number one then. So taking a interesting line there and it's time it's worked for him into turn number one so we'll see if jamie can fight back with the drs gary is out of drs though so but he's on the soft tires so expect him to stay ahead for now but the soft will drop off very soon and he's also running out of bears as well so that is interesting noisic meanwhile down the back gets uh, um ahead of tam as well another tactical move as well and uh, we'll see how if Fleddy can catch up to this Orange army of LOE cars at the moment, but I, I, I don't know, Liam. It's going to be close between these two leagues because they've got TTML P1 and P2, but we've seen in, obviously, Silverstone how, even though it was uh, a one-hub win, uh, we saw a lot of TTML cars uh, take up the spot, so we could see something similar here today. We'll have to wait and see. Fleddy is on the back of this train, and this is where we start to see the soft runners really come in to their own comments. It's not in DRS, but Fleddy is at the moment. Campbell is looking to try and get past TTML boys as well. There's so much 
things happening at the moment. We'll keep an eye on the leaders then, because that's where the important action is lying. Noisy, hang about with Dan then for P12. But what about Campbell then? Is he going to go to the left hand side onto the Decina Lago into turn four? No, not quite. The dirty air is hindering at the moment. Let's jump to Fleddy. Is he going to get past Killer Blue potentially onto turn four and five? Looking, trying to make sure they have as much space they possibly can as well. Fleddy is looking very, very anxious to get past because the soft runners are very, very quick compared to the mediums by one second. So if you, if you stop buying the means for a little while, then your softs are pretty much going to die. So we also share against the penalty. Oh, it's Fleddy almost went for a move down the inside there, but actually around the outside there, heading towards the start of sector three. We couldn't quite make it work at the moment, but... Uh, yeah, it's looking all interesting at the moment, and uh, Fleddy's the only soft runner that's catching up to this train. The other soft runners are just not on the pace right now, to be honest, and this is bad news for them. But let's see what Fleddy could do this lap then. Fleddy, is he going to go left? Is he going to go right? Or is he going to stay put? No, he's going to stay put. Oh, oh he Campbell. almost went through. Campbell going for the move though into turn number one um, on Slash, and it's not a TTML 1 2 anymore, and it's an LOE. Well, P2 and a TTML P1 then. It's Lynx versus Campbell for the race lead. That was very close between Slash there in the background as well. I wonder if Slash is getting very nervous because there's more LOE cars trying to get past as well and also chasing Fleddy as well. Oh, I'm excited for this. Three more laps, four more laps to go. I can't call it. Yeah, thank you, by the way, to uh, Infamous, my good old friend as well, for five pounds as well. And hello to the other commentators, which I've seen are joining for next. We've got James and Pepsi up the inside. Oh, that was going to work. That was a that was not going to work, Sunshine. Fleddy has, well, he's, well, he's not well, he's not where he was now because one, two, three, four positions down. And Fleddy was looking optimistic. He tried it. And, it, well, he, well, Killer Blue didn't see that coming. He had already shut the door before the manoeuvre was done. And unfortunately, contact, and here comes Come Larkin on. to the outside line. This is for second position. Lane breaking is going to stick the nose in on the inside. Is Slash. Can he do a lot? Now it's second and third for League of Europe. But what about the exit then? Which way is he going to go with DRS? Has he got anything? Look at here at Campbell. Now to the inside to take the lead. To take the lead. He is into the lead then. Here on map 16 of 80. And now all of a sudden the League of Europe coming alive. When it matters, when they need it most. They're all of a sudden coming through here in Brazil. And now first, third, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Tenth position for them. The TTML boys down in second, third, ninth, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. 17th and 18th, but one out of this race here on lap 16. What a nice little move, though, up the inside, but it's not all over yet. Look, remember, here is the second bite of the cherry. Here is the second opportunity for overtakes. Is Lynx going to try and do anything? Let's see. Well, Lynx is always a nice little thing to put on, but I think he's a little bit too far back, though. Larkin very much might eat Lynx for breakfast. Let's see. Three to the inside, they're going to go three wide into turn number one nearly, as now Larkin into the lead, it's going to be close on the exit of the center as they turn out! Wins. And Tam retiring in the pit lane, as now what they'll do, they'll go to the inside line and they're going to box him in, they're going to box him in, yes they will now, they're going to, oh they touch, they touch the two League of Europe because they have touched into the corner and now Campbell and Larkin go side by side and this is going to be close as here comes Lynx to the inside again and this isn't going to work boys this isn't going to work it is working how are you doing this this is wizardry this is absolute wizardry right now Campbell in third Lynx back up into second behind them look at the train of them there's about 18 million of them in a line we're on that 17 of 18 one more lap to go. J. Collins seven. So he's having the battle there with Killer Blue. But this is going to be the last opportunity. And Larkin's going to have to use every ounce of steam. He's got in that car to try and hold him back with DRS. Though then C. Links is going to have the run that down towards turn number one. Is he going to go for the maneuver? Quite yet. No, he's not. Sit back. Relax, sunshine. Do it down into turn number four. 
And that's what he's going to do. The rest of them follow suit as well. Here on the exit, then see. Left or right, yellow flag. Larry's going to the school. Squeezing to the inside. Here comes Lynx. Back to the inside. And now I've seen this before, Jess. Are we going to get a run up to the line then? What? Larkin's going to do. Dive. Save as much here as you possibly can, Sunshine. Stick as close as you can. If Campbell's got more rear rest and he's closer, let him through. Because this is all going to be about the last line. And I think, actually, Old School's hit the wall at the start line. That is what's happened to him. Ah. This, this okay. is going to be close. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight between Larkin and Lynx. And as we head towards the final few corners, then will it be a photo finish? But I think Lynx are just pulling away ever so slightly. Maybe Larkin may not have anything in the tank. No, Larkin's dropping then. Larkin is dropping from Lynx. So not the photo finish that we're thinking of, but it is TTML that win in Brazil. And it's the name of Lynx. Congratulations to him. Larkin in B2. Campbell and Verstappen in fourth. And we slash in fifth. And we got Noijig and Jacob. I think it was a photo finish between the two of them. So we have got a photo finish. But from not the top two, Carmental is in ninth. Gary in tenth. And then we've got, obviously, Fleddy down, Legend Superman. Is there any other battles happening at the back? Doesn't look like it, but it will be Ghost and Jordan um, taking up your final point scorers with three retirees of this race. But, I so we've got TTM. Oh, I was going to say what cars people were in, in terms of where they were in the top ten, but uh, the standings obviously disappeared on our screens. But, uh, I don't know. Even though with TTM win, uh, winning this race... LOE looking quite good as well. I don't know. I think it's going to be another close one between these two leagues. Don't be surprised to be uh, not much of a gap between those two in the top of the standings. And as we got some quite a few uh, celebrations there going in the background. Very interesting indeed. But uh, quite a few drivers that uh, impressed me a lot as well. I have to say, good job on Lynx as well for doing well for uh, TTML there. Starting sixth, by the way, and finishing first. Larkin starting seventh, finishing second. Good battle between those two towards the end there. Yeah, indeed. It was a fantastic battle there right to the end of this race. But it is, of course, those beautiful boys at the top. It's the boys in blue. And that is TTML right up the top. Then Lynx wins this race from Larkin. Campbell in uh, third position. Larkin in second. Verstappen in fourth. Slash ahead of Killer Blue. Then comes Nozek. Then comes Jacob. Come into this. Gary ahead of Fred. The Dan Legend. Then comes Superman, Jamie, Ghost, Jordan, Old School, Tam and Jonah at the back. There we go. So that is your fourth race of this evening. We just commentated on Jeddah and Brazil. And unfortunately, we are going to have to leave it there for us two at least. Don't you worry. We still got two more races still to go. And by the end of those two races, we will find out who will be the F1 league tournament champion um, on behalf of uh, um of uh, me and liam i'd just like to say thanks to the guys at ttml for letting us uh uh commentate for this league tournament it's been a lot of fun and uh something i would love to do again and did you have you enjoyed yourself liam i've enjoyed myself i love brazil as, as per usual brazil just like it brings the best about me doesn't it it does so we will leave you in the capable hands of uh, James Head and Pepsi in just a few moments' time, but we will take a short little break whilst uh, the commentators and the drivers get themselves ready up as well. So I need to actually check to see what uh, which leagues are next. I believe it's TTML versus FRL for the next race in around Austria and Spielberg. Oh, my God, I'm very excited to watch that already. So uh, uh, thank you for letting us commentate. We're going to have a bit of a breather, and we'll leave you in the hands of James Ed and Pepsi Free to take you through the final two races. And we'll see you in just under two minutes. <laughs> 